Good afternoon, you two. Well, uh, I've been working on a project lately, and uh, I, I did a, a pen video recently where, you know, I did a bunch of pens and stuff like that. And uh, it really got me interested in it again, and uh, maybe trying to color my blanks and, you know, how different ways I could maybe decorate these pens. And uh, I've got some, uh, uh, if any of you follow me, my channel pretty good. You know I like I like using spotted wood a good bit. But uh, you always have that difficulty turning spotted wood because, you know, it wants to tear out and stuff like that. But... Uh, I got interested in the cactus juice that's sold by turntex.com or www.turntex.com or whatever. And uh, I just wanted to try it. <clears throat> but I didn't have a vacuum system to do it with. So uh, I built one. Now, uh, this is not my idea. I didn't come up with this myself. But uh, I did some research on YouTube and I found out how to convert a compressor into a vacuum pump okay my very first one was just one of these little uh, roadside tire inflating things I go to like 250 psi takes forever pump tire but I actually converted this into a vacuum pump uh, unfortunately I had already about burned the pump up so it couldn't actually get the the uh, the vacuum that I was looking for, uh, which is around 20 to 23 inches of mercury, uh, depending on where you live and your altitude and all, you know that that's going to vary a little bit. But uh, I I didn't want to go pay a bunch of money for a vacuum pump, a dedicated vacuum pump. So what I did was I converted my compressor. It's an old compressor I haven't used in several years. Uh, it's just one of the pancake style compressors that I used to use on construction sites. And uh, if you've got a compressor, then you have a vacuum pump, okay? All you're gonna do is take the, the air that would normally be going into the compressor to be compressed down into the tank you're taking that intake side and basically putting a hose on it, okay? The compressor, this, this compressor here pumps to like 135 PSI, whatever. So it's a strong pump. It does a 2.6 CFM, I think is what it does. Not really sure. I cut that part out. But, but, uh, but anyway, for every CFM that goes into the tank, it has to have a CFM coming into the compressor well that side is vacuum so anyway uh, I've uh, if you, you saw my beginning here I've got this camera on my gauge here and what I did was I've, I've got my watch sitting there too also timing it to show how good uh, my vacuum chamber holds air and all, and uh, how fast the compressor can pull it down. So anyway, uh, if you wanna know how I did this, and like I said, it is not my idea. So I, I, there's a lot of videos on YouTube on how to do this, but I haven't seen one done with a compressor of this size. It's always been the really small ones like that. But this compressor out here pulls vacuum like that. I mean, it is fast. But I've got this camera set up, that's why it's kinda in the way right now. Uh, but it's keeping it's keeping an eye on my on my vacuum gauge and it's keeping an eye on my stopwatch and I'm just trying to see if this thing is going to pull or if, if the if it's going to lose vacuum and it hasn't so far I've turned my little petcock valve off or my little quarter turn valve is off so I'm going to have my hose disconnected so you may see the the gauge move around a little bit every now and then because I'm going to be showing you how I did this thing right here on the workbench. Alright, let's get started with this thing. Alright, we're going to start by unplugging and, uh, and remove the 
casing. <clears throat> okay, got all the screws out. Now we'll take it off from the mount and gently, carefully pull the casing apart. Very carefully bringing out the motor and the pump assembly. <clears throat> Trying to keep everything kind of organized. You can see where I'd, I've already done this before and I tore the fan up. <laughs> uh, when I put it back together, it was too close to the wires. Uh, and you can see where the wires got chewed up also. So it tore all the veins off the fan, but I can build a fan, so no worries. Now, uh, just to kind of look over the pump, see the big flywheel and the uh, push rod pushes the piston uh, and the cylinder in and out, which, uh, you know, pulls air and pushes air. The compressor takes, takes advantage of the pushed air and the vacuum takes advantage of the pulled air. This is the head. Okay, we have a discharge side here. It goes down this tube. At, uh, as the compressor comes forward, it goes down that tube, forces air into the tank, compressing it. <clears throat> First of all, I'm gonna take the head off. Uh, just, just start by removing all the, all the uh, machine screws from the head. And you can already see my port there. Uh, I'm just going back through the, through the procedure to show you how I did it. But these are the discharge. This is the discharge side here. These valves open up to allow air to go be pushed through this tube and down into the tank. That's this side of the pump. Let's get that out of the way for just a minute. Now these are the intake valves. Okay, this is where the air comes into the uh, pump. And it uh, this is the intake side of the head. You can see where I've drilled a 3 8 hole and inserted a, a 3 8 tube into it and they pops it in. Also, I had to close up the original intakes. I closed them with JB Weld. I just filled them up and uh, sanded them smooth so I don't get airflow trying to come in there. Uh, it would have just been too hard to have tried to get my vacuum from, from those intakes, so I made my own intake. Put it right here. Just epoxy it in. And then, uh, about ready to put back together. If you want to continue to use this as a compressor, you'll have to reattach this this hose, which will allow the, the air to be pushed back into the back into the tank and you know continue on compressing. But that's all there is to it. All I've really done is just add this port. I'll, uh, I'll just put the head back together or put it back on. Be very careful not to damage the surfaces as you do this uh, because you could get air leakage on one side of the pump or the other. have it done <clears throat> then I'll have to build me a fan and I'll show you how I'll do that uh, to go on the motor shaft to, to because I'm worried that this motor may get may get hot it had a fan to begin with and after I destroyed it well now I've got to fix it uh, yeah what had happened was uh, when I put the casing back together I didn't pay close attention to how the wires ran and the fan uh, blades got got into the wires and chewed the wires up and tore the fan apart. So 
<laughs> had to fix the wires and, and everything. So now I'm gonna start with my fan. I just need to figure out how, what size I need and get this, get the old fan off, which it's, uh, it was on, put on with uh, splines and uh, would not come off. So I'm just gonna take my, my little angle grinder and I'm just gonna cut it off. cut it and break it off. There we go. All right, so I know the diameter of the hub, what the hub needs to be. Now all I need to know is the inside diameter of what to bore my hole. And I'll do this all on the lathe. I'll use Corian. You see I've already uh, balanced and trued this one up. And now I'm just boring the hole through it and uh, I'll get ready to uh, put my veins in it and I'll be good to go. I like the Corian because it's, uh, it's very stable. I'll mark eight, mark for eight veins, which is uh, Two lines 90 degrees from each other and then 45s off of those. I'll go to the bandsaw. Bandsaw has a, a tilt to it. I just tilted it to its maximum and uh, I'll cut these lines. That'll give me forward pressure coming off my fan to force air up, up toward the motor. Now I'm just going to use a piece, uh, some pieces of Formica laminate, uh, sand, sand them good so there's no shiny surfaces or anything like that. And then I'll just start placing them in the in the fan hub. This fan should end up the same size as the other. I found out what to do with the wires. <laughs> Make sure all your blades are straight and flat, because uh, once you get them glued in there, they're done. They're uh, they're there. Just use uh, the NCA glue to glue them in, and I'm about ready to go. I'm going to use epoxy to uh, to mount the hub back onto the motor shaft. on there and we'll be all set. There we go. I have to wait, wait for this to cure up before I can actually use the pump, but oh, uh, it's good. Okay, now we'll just reassemble everything back together, carefully putting everything back in the case the way it goes. If you notice over here on the left side, I've, I've had to cut out a large portion there to uh, for my uh, vacuum port to stick out. Very carefully and, and make sure your wires are routed away from that fan. they are but now I'm just going to double check looking in there and making sure that nothing can contact uh, even if it bounces around there is a channel inside the casing for the wires which I did not find the first time then we just start putting it all back together put all the all the screws back in get the uh, get it mounted back onto the tank Okay, I put my experimental vacuum chamber here, and all it is is just a large pickle jar, because I love pickles. But uh, I've, I've put a couple of blanks in there, 
and this is actually green dye. I know it looks black, but it's actually green. And it looks like my weight came loose, so I'm gonna have to. I've just got a piece of heavy Corian here to hold the blanks down. Uh, see how, just see how it does. Um, I'm just, like I say, this is just an experimental vacuum chamber. I've, I've put a gasket on the inside up here so it'll seal better. And I put a, uh, a little fit in here, a silicone in uh, for my hose. All right, well, right here, this, this 3H pipe that you see right there is my intake or my vacuum port. So now I'll plug in vacuum hose to it, just like so. And we will turn this thing on and see how she does with vacuum. Let me see, I've got my, my gauges here right there and it's on zero so let's go ahead and turn this thing on it's already the 20 it's at 23 now i'm going to shut it off Okay, the air that you hear is coming from the petcock valve on the bottom of the compressor, which is uh, right there. I don't want to be compressing the air right now, although it could. All I need is uh, to compress it. But now with my with my quarter turn valve, which is just a fuel valve for a lawnmower, uh, I'm at. 23 inches right there and that's the inside of my my little uh, jar here you see all the bubbles that's the green dye going into the wooden blanks or actually the air coming out of the wooden blanks and once I take the vacuum off you know all that water and uh, actually this is water based dye I was experimenting with uh, but anyway I'm just trying to see how the vacuum's gonna work. And uh, right now I have uh, 23, 23 inches of mercury inside that chamber. And uh, I'll leave it there until it quits bubbling. And then I'll wait, uh, you know, a little while. Uh, and I'll let all the, all the vacuum out of the chamber and uh, allow the water and the dye to get into the wood and they recommend about twice as long as it takes for the bubbles to stop so I'm looking at maybe uh, from from what I hear people saying is about 40 minutes for the bubbles to stop and then actually another 40 minutes at zero uh, vacuum to allow the the water and all to get into the wood okay I want to show you this. This is going to be my vacuum chamber here. And the way this is going to work is uh, I'll pull vacuum in this chamber and I can use like say these jars like this, the uh, little jars and I can put my die in it and my blanks and stuff like that and just set them in here. Put the lid on And right here is my port. Okay, I pull vacuum in there. I can get about four of those jars. So I can actually have like four different colored blanks going on at the same time trying to color them or stabilize them. I have the, uh, the cactus juice from uh, Turntex to stabilize any, any bad spotted wood. And, uh, and I am going to be experimenting with this over the next little while. All right, there she is. I now have a vacuum compressor. I can use it, I can still use it to run nail guns or uh, 
small spray stuff or you know different pneumatic tools because the uh, the compressor was not changed the, the compressor was not modified all I did was just take and I just put in a port on the intake side of the compressor so that I could I could use that to pull vacuum on something else so I have a vacuum pump and a compressor and it uh, it cost me whatever the compressor cost me about 10 years ago when uh, when I got it uh, like I say it was uh, uh, used in construction I use it on construction site to run nail guns and things like that but it's just been sitting for about three or four years and I had saw videos on changing compressors into vacuum pumps such as the, this one and there were always these type of these type and uh, and it did work it worked really good but it would only get down to about eight or ten uh, inches of, of mercury uh, and that's because the pump was actually bad on it but the ones I saw on YouTube they you know they would get on down to 22 23 inches uh, but now all of that depends on your elevation above sea level so you need to uh, you know the higher you are above sea level the less vacuum you can pull uh, anyway somebody that lives on uh, mountaintops out in the Rockies somewhere you know uh, you're not going to be able to pull a vacuum like somebody that lives on the beach uh, you know down in Florida or whatever but anyway that's what I've got I've got a usable compressor vacuum pump I've got a vacuum chamber and everything's still curing up on it. Uh, I have my experimental vacuum chamber here and it's still at 23 inches of mercury. I'll show you that again uh, later if you'd like to see it. But uh, the uh, I should have no problem using this to stabilize faulty blanks or dye uh, blanks and things like that. Uh, you know, following the instructions, I think they can't be very big blanks, but, you know, maybe uh, that's what I'm doing right now is experimenting. I've got some that are dyed. They're in here being dyed right now. I've got some outside in my kiln drying uh, in the little toaster oven that I use to uh, heat the kiln, uh, which actually works really well, by the way. Um, but it's drying they're drying inside there i've got four blanks out there they're all green uh, i know this looks black but it's not black it's actually green when it dries so uh but anyway with that i hope you enjoyed the video maybe it'll help uh because i'm fixing to get into some uh dyeing and stabilizing and things like that all right